Hey YouTube. Okay, this is going to be a two month update on Weston. Sorry that it's been a really long time and I haven't been able to do like weekly updates. Um, things don't really change weekly enough to uh, make a video about it. So I've just been trying to capture like certain moments and um, been uploading them on YouTube. So I'll probably continue to do that and just do like a monthly update on him. Um, at least until things get a little bit more interesting. Um, let's see. I guess I can start off with, we went to the doctor yesterday. He went for his two months checkup. So he was nine weeks yesterday. And, um, he's in the 50th percentile as far as everything goes. His head circumference is 15 inches. Um... I think actually that was like the 25th percentile, but I don't think that she measured it right because we keep getting like 15 and a half, so I don't know. Anyway, um, his length is 23 inches, and he was 20 inches at birth, and his weight was 11 pounds, 14 ounces, so he's almost 12 pounds. He's getting really big. Um, the doctor, um, you know, checked over everything. Everything looks good on him. Um, he got five shots and he did not like them at all. He screamed and screamed, and he had this horrible, terrified look in his face, and I felt so bad for him because he was looking at me and screaming like, Mom, why are you letting this happen? And it was just really, it made me really upset to have to watch that, but, um, you know, it's better than them dying of some disease, I guess. Um, so he goes back at his four months. He goes back at four months old for his next checkup. Um... One thing that the doctor asked me about was, like, how his sleeping was, like, I guess uh, the sleeping arrangement was, and, you know, he's sleeping in bed with us right now, and that's just because, um, you know, he was sleeping on his own in his bassinet, um, swaddled, and then he stopped wanting to be swaddled. He kept fighting it. He would wake up, like, I would swaddle him when he was asleep, and he would wake up and fight it, and then I swaddled him when he was awake, and he definitely doesn't like being swaddled when he's awake. Um, so the only way I could get sleep, like, he won't just let you lay him down in the crib or bassinet. Like, he just wakes up. Just, he has some kind of sensor on him or something and he knows. So, um, he's just had to sleep with me because the only way I'm getting sleep is if he's in my bed with me. But anyway, um, obviously the doctor doesn't like that idea. And, you know, I've read different opinions as far as you know, co-sleeping, like, some people think it's a good thing, some people don't think it's a good thing, and then there's some kind of attachment theory, you know, that maybe, some people say babies develop better, they're closer to their parents, and some people say they don't, and, you know, I've read into a lot of that, and I have a doctor who doesn't agree with co-sleeping, and, um, you know, he was like, well, he's getting to that age where, I'm telling you this story because I'm kind of wanting opinions as far as this goes. Like, what's your opinion? If you have a child, like, what did you do with sleeping arrangements? Um, like, I need advice. Um, but he was telling us, basically, that he should be sleeping through the night now. And, or starting to sleep through the night now. He has, on occasion, slept six hours, seven hours. And, um, but that's not every night. And that's maybe, like, once or twice a week. But he usually sleeps about four hours and then gets up and he still is eating at night. Um, but he thinks he should be sleeping through the night and not eating at all. And, like, sleeping seven or eight hours. And if he does it on his own, I think that's fine. But I don't know that I agree with that. And I don't feel comfortable doing that yet, especially since he's only two months old. Um, maybe at four months I could see that. Kind of what my idea was is waiting he does it on his own, you know, like when he's, but he's, the doctor says that some people come in and they're still doing monthly or monthly nightly feedings at 12 months old. So I have no idea. Um, but he thinks that we need to get him, but he needs to be sleeping on his own. And so that means he said, you need to put him in his crib, um, you know, shut the door or whatever. And, um, basically let him cry it out. You know, those weren't his exact words, but um, teach him, let him teach himself how to self-soothe. So don't rock him to sleep and give him a bottle, let him fall asleep, and then put him in his crib. Um, basically, let him figure it out on his own. And if he wakes up in the middle of the night, like he always does, 
then make him cry it out. Like, don't go in there and get him. And that just seems really cruel to me. Um, I just don't, I maybe agree with that to an extent, like maybe when he's like four months old or six months old doing that, as far as, um, putting him in there and, you know, crying himself to sleep. Um, you know, I see it, I know at some point I'm going to have to, I'm going to be stuck with him in my bed. And if that's not the case and you've done it successfully, let me know. My husband wants him out of bed. So that's kind of my other obstacle that I have. And I understand that. I don't, I never intended to sleep with him. And, um, I don't really want to sleep with him because I don't get good sleep because I'm constantly waking up, um, cause he wakes up, he'll start moving. And when he goes through REM sleep, I guess, and from what I've read, they go through REM sleep about every hour, hour and a half and his arms automatically start moving and hitting himself in the face and it wakes him up. So what I have to do is like pull him into my arms while we're sleeping and keep giving him a pacifier to keep him asleep or else I'm getting up every two hours. But that way I get up every four or five hours if but it takes work on my half to do that. So I'm not getting good sleep at night. But um, I'm definitely not ready to make him sleep on his own if he's gonna cry and, and then ignore him if he cries in the middle of the night like he's hungry. Because the doctor thinks he can just go without eating right now. And I don't know. I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, so just if you don't mind, you can email me or just leave a comment. Because I'd love to hear what you did. Um, if you have children. Um, let's see here. So that was that's a big thing that's going on. Um, as far as like our daily routine, we don't really have much of a routine. And I'm trying to get better at that because... Yesterday, for example, I kept him up longer through the day. And, um, I, you know, I kept reading to him, making him sit up, um, talking to him, carrying him around the house, talking to him. And um, he slept seven hours straight last night. And then he slept another three hours after, yeah, three hours after that. So I got a lot of sleep, which was great. And, um, yeah, so... Like I said, I'm, we're working on a routine. You know, babies don't come with manual. So, you know, I would do like a day in a life video, but it would bore you guys. <laughs> because I just hold him all day or, you know, he takes a nap during the day, sleeps sometimes, and um, he drinks. He I feed him when he's hungry still. You know, we just don't have a set time. And, um... You know, I don't really know what to do about that. It's my first child. I'm just learning, you know. I'm learning all this stuff myself. Um, and, like, I don't know how other YouTube moms have time to make videos all the time. Like, I'm not saying anything about, like, your mothering or anything. I just I have no time to do anything. And so maybe you have some tips for, you know, because I would like to be able to make more YouTube videos. And, you know, I barely have time to take showers. I don't have time to take showers during the day. I have to wait till my husband gets home. So that's like an every other night thing that I'm taking a shower. And and then that's gross. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people always take a shower every day. And I've even gone three days without taking a shower. And that's really gross. Um, well, let's see here. So, yeah, we just... Um, he is... Cloth diapering is going really well. Um, we still occasionally use um, disposables. I'll do more videos on cloth diapering as I have time. Um, he's eating about four to five ounces every three to four hours. And that apparently that's what he's supposed to be doing. Um, but according to my doctor, not at night, like doesn't make any sense to me, but he gave me a paper that said that. So I don't, anyway, I'm getting off that topic. Um, and let's see here. He's in like zero to three month clothing. He like grew out of the newborn clothing probably within two or three weeks. He didn't fit in him long. Um, and uh, let's see here. He loves books. Absolutely loves to be read to. He actually pays attention. And he coos and he oohs and ahs. And it's really cute. So I have to, I have to make a video of that. And he absolutely loves his bath time. Loves bath time. So, um... Yeah, of course, you guys saw that video of him splashing in the bath, and he does that every single night. We give him a bath every night as part of our nightly routine, because I read you're supposed to have a nightly routine, and um, then we put the lavender lotion on him and stuff, and he goes right to sleep, 
Um, sometimes he fusses and he does have a tendency to cry himself to sleep or like in my arms like he'll just cry and cry and fuss and fuss and fuss and nothing that I do like I just keep rocking him and patting him on the butt and keep putting a pacifier in his mouth and eventually he goes to sleep but um he's just one of those babies that just like to fuss a little bit before he falls asleep um that's about it he um he went through some growth spurts at three weeks and six weeks um, the six-week one was really bad, and three-week one, we thought he had colic, and, um, he cried a lot, like, pretty much fussed all day, and especially in the evening, at three weeks, at the same time every evening, he started crying, and he would not stop crying for a few hours, and that, that only lasted, like, a week, though, and, but we thought for sure he had colic then, and then, um, we switched his, his formula, and that seemed to work, and then he got constipated, um, he was on infamil gentle ease and then that made him constipated and so then we switched him and then by that time he was going through his six week um was it his six week i think we switched before that but anyway um we switched him to similac sensitive and um he wasn't constipated with that so and it works it's like for fussiness and it actually works i think but his six week, oh boy, I mean, he fussed and fussed and fussed and fussed and fussed and all day and night, and I could not do anything except for hold him. So, um, anyway, that's about it, I think. And if you have any questions, just ask me. Um, I'm probably forgetting something, I'm not sure. Um, but please leave advice for me as far as like what you did at night. Um, sleeping routines, daily routines, anything like that. I'm up for suggestions, and I'll try anything. <laughs> well, I won't say anything. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.